is built up within uh, the paperbark tree itself. And this then represents the honeycomb. Uh, and uh, these represent the cells uh, of the hive and the structure within the hive. Uh, the white here will uh, represent uh, the uh, grubs themselves. Uh, the red and the red crosshatching here uh, represents uh, the, the honey uh, that uh, is contained uh, within the cells. And the black here uh, represents uh, bits of uh, you know, stick and wood that are in the structure of the hive and that uh, as uh, um, uh, will sort of catch in your throat uh, when you're uh, swallowing the honey. So it represents here the honey. And you can see the dots that are going in here. Uh, these are the bees flying in and out of the hive in the paperbark tree. Uh, and then uh, it's time to collect the honey and you set fire to the country. And now you'll immediately uh, probably begin to be able to interpret this in relation to fire. Uh, the red here uh, represents uh, the flames. Uh, the uh, black is the blackened wood after the fire has gone by. Uh, the white uh, represents uh, the white layers of ash uh, that form after the uh, uh, fire has gone by. And the red cross-hatching here uh, represents sparks. And the little black dots, which in other contexts can represent the bees, here represents little pieces of black uh, burning, uh, you know, uh, sorry, charcoal floating around uh, uh, in the wind caused by the fire. So this painting here represents the uh, ancestral birkuda, or fire. Uh, now, as I said, this is only one of the manifestations uh, of that particular ancestral being. Um, in its origin, this design has a whole series of origins uh, which are in the uh, creative acts of the ancestral being. One of those is that uh, the ancestral beings um, themselves uh, uh, um, uh, made uh, paper bark uh, uh, um, uh, beaters that are used in the ceremonial context. They folded up sheets of paper bark and uh, the pattern that was made by the folding of the paper bark was this particular diamond design. Another is that people used fire uh, 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 clapping sticks in a ceremonial performance. Uh, and uh, after a fire went over a ceremonial ground, uh, people uh, and, and an ancestral being was killed. The, that particular diamond pattern uh, was, uh, if you like, etched into the back of a collapsed clapping stick that then became a sacred object. So there are natural origins for the particular design, but the design also uh, represents, uh, if you like, uh, the encoded meaning associated with that. Fire uh, then travelled from place to place, and in this particular case, uh, it uh, uh, travelled partly by uh, the ancestral being himself, um, who in his anger threw fire brands uh, over the country to a neighbouring country, therefore spreading fire. Uh, later on, when it got to the coast, uh, 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 a crocodile ancestor uh, carried the fire on its back and uh, later a quail. So there are a whole series of ancestral stories that are connected to this, but in every case, paintings that are associated with will have a variant of this particular uh, diamond uh, design uh, on it. Um, and uh, in ceremonial context, uh, uh, a whole series of sounds will be made that evoke uh, uh, the uh, ancestral events uh, uh, associated with wild honey, and uh, analogues will uh, be drawn. So uh, you'll actually uh, hear sounds that can mean the distant sound, or the threatening sound, I suppose, of uh, either the flood waters that are just about to a uh, 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 cascade down the river, or uh, the sounds of a bushfire, or the sounds of honeybee. And those sounds will be used in ceremonial context as another way in which you, if you like, um, create the reality of this ancestral being. And 